So for day five of tutorial week, I'm going to cover a little bit on how to get the most out of your camera. Uh, I'm just going to be split up a little bit because there's multiple pieces outside of SFM too, just uh, methods and cinematography uh, that I want to cover on how to get the most out of and the best quality video out of anything you do. Um, first off, I wanted to cover ambient occlusion though. And uh, to help show you that I got Pinkie Pie here, uh, and she's going to be my assistant. Um, thank you, Pinkie. And uh, w if you don't know what uh, ambient occlusion is, it's the method that computer uses to try to simulate at realistic lighting. Um, in here, you'll see it as kind of these shadowing uh, elements here. Uh, there's something called SSAO, which is uh, screen space ambient occlusion, and that's the uh, a method of trying to get uh, calculate the ambient occlusion in real time. Um, now I've already modified the SSAO on this model here so that you can it gets the the best defined lines at least the ones that I like. Um, without those changes uh, this is what you're gonna get. This is the base default numbers. You're gonna look at some of these corners you're starting to see some of the polygons here. It's not gonna look that great. With small changes you can make a big difference. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to actually kinda change those values to get what you want here. Um, one thing, quick thing to look here, if you go to right click to your render settings, you have your ambient occlusion down here. We'll go to this later too, but if you do show ambient occlusion, check that, you're going to get a very white screen. Um, this is actually just showing the overlay that for the shadowing. Um, so you can see uh, just uh, where those shadows are popping up on the model. If I go back to the other camera I modified, you'll see this is even dip more different. So the, the values you're going to want to uh, to modify here are on your camera and they're going to all start with SSAO, your bias, bias strength and radius. Um, you can kind of play around with these values to see what they do. Um, I'm right now playing with the default ones and so you can see by just changing these you're getting a much different change in shadows. I think though the bias is going to be but like kind of the strength or uh, around the corners there. Uh, the strength itself is going to be making some of those darker lines you can see um, it's just getting a darker color and the radius is going to be I think just spreading it out a little bit so you're gonna to have to play around with these values I mean, it's uh, I, I'll put the actual values that I use um, up in the description here so you can see how uh, what I would use for the values but it's going to be dependent on the scene so here I just use my default values but say um, say you were in a different uh, a lighter area you're probably gonna to want to lighten up these shadows a little bit that brings me to another point of you can change the color that that uh, shadow is showing as. So if you right click the camera and go to show an element viewer and then camera, you'll pop up with your element viewer here. This SSAO tint is the color that is showing in the background there. So if you click that, you can actually change it to whatever color you want. If you want white, uh, though that's just going to show as nothing. You can do as red. I mean, that's going to look a little strange, but you can you can lighten that up a little bit by making it say a little little more gray so uh, there now it's not as harsh and it's looking a little better uh, the other benefit it has for this um, I'll get back to the uh, other viewer in a sec here um, under the render settings here you can change your your ambient occlusion mode right now it's just AO only which is just doing the shadows you can also change it to outline which this can be a little strange we get the outline here and then doing both uh, doing both actually ha can have some nice effects. And I'll show you here. Having a black line isn't going to be exactly what you're looking for, but if you open up that in the uh, element viewer again, if you change your tint to like kind of a gray, it. Uh, oh, here, let me make sure I got the right camera here. Um, you can actually get uh, a kind of a really a more cartoonish effect here. It doesn't make the outline gray and makes it semi-transparent just when you're white how it disappears completely. Gray will actually blend with the color in the background a little bit so with the right amount of gray here you can actually give a pink with a darker pink outline or whatever color it is at the metro model that's a little bit more like the show has. Um, so if you play with those values you can get something that's a little bit closer to what the show has. It's not going to be perfect, not going to be exactly like the show because uh, you are working with a 3D model but it's just dependent on what kind of uh, a look you're going for. Um, that's uh, basically it for SSAO. It's just a really simple concept but it can make a big change. So uh, remember to check the descriptions for the values I have and just play around with them to see what you want to get out of it. 
the next little camera trick I wanted to cover uh, is actually a really old standing one and it's called the rule of thirds. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's where you split the, the screen into well, thirds both vertically and horizontally. Uh, horizontally is in trying to find, put the, uh, the horizon along one of the thirds, so at this point or at this point, and to put your subject along the vertical ones, so around this third or on this third. Um, and usually the intersection points are where you, the points of focus that you want to that you, you want to have something placed there so in this picture i'm not really following that uh i got dash actually being cute here just in the center frame um and the horizon is kind of around the center um it's not really fitting for what uh what you should be it's not attracting to the eye dash is too much in focus there um so we'll change this up to try to actually uh to fit the rule of thirds here and it doesn't just apply to pictures it applies to video as well um now, the, one of the difficulties you might have is trying to actually fit along a third. Now, that's you don't have to actually fit along an exact third. It's usually just trying to fit in the, uh, around there. Um, to actually help out a little bit, I created a little overlay that you can add in here. I'm going to show you how to ins put that on. Um, on my DA, I added a, I have a little download here that you can you can go over here to download and download this file. Um, there's going to be instruction on how to put it in, uh, open it up and install it down here. But um, to actually get that added, if you go down to your overlay here, well, in the uh, the clip editor, you can right-click the the brownish part here, say Add Clip to Track, and then go to Material Overlay Effect. Just click OK, and you're going to get a little extra clip here. I'm going to extend this to make sure that it covers the entire clip. Okay, and now you just have to right-click this, go to Show an Element Viewer. And over here you have your material. You can add the material that you want to have for the overlay. So with the little uh, three dots there, do a search for rule of third once you have them in, and they'll pop up here. So I'm going to grab one of them here and say open. Now you're going to see that you have your overlay effect here. Now you have those uh, those those third lines. Um, if you want to shut that out because this will show up in your final render, just get the little checkbox here and it's gone. So let's modify this picture to try to fit uh, within the rule of thirds here. So I'm going to take my camera and will what third you want to use for um, the horizon is going to be dependent on what your focus is uh, because right now the focus is more up than down I don't want to focus on the ground because of the sunset here I want to have that bottom th third with with the horizon so about let's say right about there should be fine and then we'll move so that dash can be in that farther third um, don't be creeped out by the eyes I locked it to the camera so I don't have to worry about that so but that's because the sun's a focus i'm going to try to adjust this so that we have things placed a little bit more within or at those points let's do this zoom in a little bit okay so okay now we actually have things within the third so let's look at the effect here um and i let me get a focus in there too okay so yeah, that looks a lot better. Now you have its dashes within that one third, um, and again, it doesn't have to be exact, but you can tell by the position that um, it, you, your eyes want to go up. The background is a, more of a focus. Um, everything just looks a, a little better, and that does follow through with video. If somebody is talking, um, and they're or if somebody is talking, looking left, you want to have the left open. If they're looking right, you want to have the right open. If they're moving to the left, have uh, have the uh, the left open. Have them moving into a shot. Uh, not out of it um, and uh, and trying to keep the horizons around that point sometimes if you don't have a horizon to go off of uh, just kind of use your, your best sense on how to do that but um, yeah it, it really can add a lot to a shot just to have uh, people placed along those third lines the last thing I wanted to cover uh, when it comes to some enhancing the camera a little bit is the uh, the use of camera motion uh, to enhance and actually hide some of the uh, potential animation errors or mechanical movements that you might have in your animations. Um, so here, I just wanted to show how it can enhance the scene a little bit from, this is a canceled thing that was working on way, 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 way back. Um, and this the first part I have, this is just stationary, and it's just showing uh, camera sitting here, change links, bouncing across, um, and then Twilight running here. The, the camera's not moving, and it's, it 
only gives life to the models that are moving. But here, now with uh, with things moving, you it gives life to the scene. The trees look like they came alive a little bit more because this the turning the camera. And here, um, ignore Twilight's hair kind of going crazy there. Um, it really gives uh, um, some life to the uh, to the scene. So. Um, Especially here, um, that turning really brings the force to life, and all it took was just uh, the motion of the camera, as compared to here where it was just stationary. Um, I in almost anything I do, even if it's just a small short conversation, I'll have the camera shifting back and forth just a little bit, uh, give that parallax effect, just because it does a, a whole lot of good, just to keep the camera moving in in even the tiniest bit of ways, um, and there's another benefit than having a camera motion um, that you may not know if you're just in the find a way video uh, there was actually a lot of little animation errors in here that were hidden by the fact that I never really had the camera stop moving all the way through um, like if you watch here uh, when Twilight is walking um, her legs actually slide quite a bit um, she doesn't even get to come to a perfect stop but in the final video um, you really can't even see that. Um, it's hard with the camera moving to actually see that there was uh, any of those uh, sliding motions at all. Um, and or here when she's uh, coming to a stop when she, after she's done turning, um, the motion's actually fairly mechanical. Like here, it's just the last two legs that are are moving. That's it. Uh, but again, when you look at the final video, you don't even see that. The camera, the camera's giving a false sense of motion to the eye for what the model might be doing. Um, so it's something so simple uh, and it might take some time. I probably spend about half of the time making sure my, uh, or modifying and uh, giving animation to the camera as I do to the actual models because in the end it, it actually does make a big difference. Um, there's there's a lot of different uh, camera tricks I, I I would like to cover, but it would take forever. These are the main ones I wanted to try to cover because they're things that I don't see very uh, that often compared to um, some of the other ones. So um, I hope that uh, I hope that was helping. Um, tomorrow uh, I was going to cover. Um, actually, I can't remember. What I was going to cover. Um, oh, lip syncing. So um, that might be a little bit of a longer video. Um, I haven't recorded it yet, but the. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking about it. So otherwise, uh, stay tuned for tomorrow, and I hope that uh, a lot of these have been helping you throughout this week.